we're going to discuss a contractile dysfunction of the lumbar spine or a tendinosis of the lumbar spine. It's not all that common, but it's difficult at times to differentiate this versus a derangement. So we're just going to take a contractile dysfunction of the lumbar spine through your testing motions and say what you would commonly find during those testing motions. First would be forward flexion. You would actually be tensioning the tissue at end range and you would feel that pain reproduced at end range and you would also feel that during the way up because you're having to actively contract the tissue to come back to neutral. So forward there at the end range because of the stretch of the tissue and on the way back up because of the contraction of the tissue. Also you will feel the contractile tissue dysfunction when you're going into extension because you're contracting the tissue. The big difference between a contractile tissue dysfunction and a derangement is that you will not have a limited range of motion with a contractile tissue dysfunction in the lumbar spine. You should have limited range of motion with a derangement of the lumbar spine. So with side glide, it can go either way. If you side glide away from it, and if you side glide toward it, you might feel some end range stretch when you're going away from it, and you might feel some contraction of the tissue itself when you're going toward it. Toward it, this way, toward it that way. That way. When you side glide toward the tissue dysfunction, you might have some symptoms reproduced because you're utilizing the tissue that has that contractile dysfunction in it. And if you side glide away from it, you might feel that due to the stretching of the contractile dysfunction tissue. Again, the big difference will be you will not have a large limited range of motion with either direction versus with a derangement of the lumbar spine, you will have a limited range of motion in one direction or the other or possibly both. One of the treatments that we like to utilize when we're treating a lumbar tendinosis or a contractile dysfunction in the lumbar spine is the lumbar medex. So what we'll use is a very light weight at first just to make sure that they will not get worse, they will not create an inflammatory process, but once they're safe with that and you know they can utilize it, you can have them do repeated concentric <coughs> motions. Again, lighter weight progressing to heavier weight. And when they get to that point where they're maybe 75% of the way, they feel really good during the day, it's just really heavy lifting that gets it, you can do an eccentric type of load with a lumbar medex. And that will really kick in the lumbar spine musculature and make sure that that tendinosis completely remodels. You don't want to leave them with 75% improvement with a lumbar spine dysfunction. Because as soon as they lift something heavy, bam, it's right back to that point where they think that, oh, you did nothing for me, you didn't fix me. So it's really important that you give them enough load to remodel that completely. This is also a good test. This will test and make sure that they are completely remodeled and that they do not have any more of that tendinosis-like tissue in their lumbar spine musculature. We're gonna run through a series of exercises that you can perform to help remodel that lumbar dysfunction or that lumbar tendinosis. A pretty low level one that we'll start with commonly is the Superman technique. Up and then right back down flat with a full rest in between each repetition. So that's a really good one to start with. It will produce some symptoms and should go right away when they get to that relaxation phase. A slightly higher level exercise for the lumbar tissue dysfunction is table hip extension. So when you bring that hip into extension, it will utilize that musculature. It should produce 
a bit of pain with the pain on, pain off type of symptomatic response. This is a good one because patients can actually do this at home quickly. They don't have to lie down to do it. And it's usually not something that will be symptomatically provoking or creating an inflammatory response by using it multiple times per day. Yeah. So a higher level exercise than the Superman exercise and the table hip extension is you can do lumbar extension on a ball what you want to do is just come up, right back down, pain on, pain off, and you can vary this and make it a little more difficult. You can put your hands across your chest. You can also put your hands behind your head. You can also utilize some weights across the chest and hold them across the chest while you're doing these, but again it should always be Pain on, pain off. A fourth level of the exercise that we like to do with lumbar tissue dysfunction is a deadlift. You can vary the weight, you can vary the angle. Sometimes if you do a little bit of a uh, forward bend with the knees straighter or more bent, you can also vary the amount of stress on that tissue. But again, play around with the weight, play around with the angles, and that will produce the required progression of force that you need to further remodel that lumbar dysfunction. Another mid-level to higher level exercise that we'll utilize is the QL raise. You can also have a patient where ankle weights on this so it's a little bit more difficult and a good portion of the time this will be felt immediately but it should be in a pain on pain off type of manner pain on pain off type of manner another activity that we like to do is using multi-directional force progressions by doing PNF patterns different amounts of weights, different speeds. You can have them doing strict motions and yet a, and yet another multiplanar direction of a PNF pattern that can be utilized to progress force through this tissue and remodel it further. Here's an exercise to further remodel the tissue dysfunction in a rotational manner, seated ball rotations.